We all like to splash the cash a little bit, whether that means buying yourself a nice car, a brand new Rolex, or even a golden Tashanka. We all like the idea of being able to do so. But how does one make money in the world of Tarkov? Today's video is one of those videos that you see on those dodgy Asian porn websites where you wonder, how can a foot fit in such a small hole? And I... I think that this is going to be a very important video because this is a get cash quick scheme that works as a point 10 patch. So today I'm going to be going over the best three ways that I've found as of the current patch to make some money. Obviously the ways of making money in Tarkov change so frequently I'll probably be doing more of these videos in the future but let's get straight into it shall we and I'll tell you what it takes to buy yourself some barely legal strippers. I'm going to be talking to you about three methods today and these are all methods that I have used to make money in Tarkov and I use actively. These methods are really good however they all have their own drawbacks but they are drawbacks that you can really easily get over. So the first thing that I'll be talking about is killing the scav bus. Now the scav boss doesn't spawn there 100% of the time unless at the time of this recording the scav boss has been up to 100% but it's not going to stay like that. So if you're watching it in the future then just be aware scav boss might not spawn all the time. But killing the scav boss, take a friend and an attack to backpack and you can pull out quite a lot of money. Now I did free runs with the scav boss along with a friend, me and Kinga. We run there as a duos, both with attack twos, and we dominated the scav boss all three times. Down. Rashala's down. Another one down. Burning grenade down the hallway. I'm in behind you. Okay, close the door. Alton, down. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Down. Nice, that's everyone. Now, for the money that we actually pulled out of these raids, it, it was quite varied. We would pull out about 250,000 each, and that was pretty good because we'd be then selling the weapons, we'd be breaking down the weapons, selling it to the relevant traders to make the most profit out of them. So, for example, the first run, Kinga got 230k, and I got 277k out of the run. Kinga on the second raid got 282k, and I got 272k. And then on the third run, Kinga got 295k, and I got 256. Now, all of these can be added up to an average, and per person, if you were going a solo, you'd be averaging about 265,250 rubles to pull out on your own. But if you were taking literally everything, and a, du a duo with an attack two is the bare minimum you can go, but basically taking anything and everything within the scav boss. But if you do that, you'll be looking to pull out 530,500 in total. And that's between two people for the bare minimum. And between you, 530,500 is really good. Now maybe you might be nice and give your half to your friend in another raid you could sell it and then drop a wallet for them if they're looking for money and you're not who knows but for 265,250 per person that's very good for killing the scav boss you've just got to realize in the future they won't be spawning 100% of the time and you do have to get out with all your loot and the scav boss it's quite rough right now in Kirsten's the second method that I would recommend is looting the Kipper store. Now, a lot of people may think the Kipper store is a bit shit, but as of the time of this recording, the Kipper store has got so much better. I've made videos on the channel previously saying the Kipper store isn't worth it, the Kipper store isn't worth it. I think it's honestly at its peak right now and I don't think it's going to move. The Kipper store is very good. Now, there are two ways to obtain the Kipper 1 key. You can either find it in the location inside Goshen. I've got a video on the channel showing the location. If you can't be bothered to go and look for it because it is a rare spawn, then you can trade it for from level 4 therapist for 35 condensed milk. Again, if you can't be bothered to grind and get the 35 condensed milk, then I suggest sitting in the corner and start lactating, man, because you are going to need to provide a hell of a lot of knockoff milk to give to therapist in order for her to believe you. 
But once you've got your Kibber keys, you can go to the interchange and then you can unlock the Kibber store. Be aware of Kibber campers because they are a real issue. Check Mantis, check up on the second floor and check the Brutal store behind you because that is the hotspots for the Kibber campers right now. When you actually get in the store, what can you find? Well, you can find anything from modded M4s, modded RSASs, modded MP133s, MPXs, and a load of attachments. This is a gun store, and it really shows now. Kinga did four runs to the Kibber store, and his average of these four runs were 257,000 rubles pull out. However, it does vary a lot. You have to rely on RNG a hell of a lot here, because sometimes you can pull out 475,000 for example in one run that was what he did on his third run however on his fourth run he only pulled out 85,000 so you can tell that it is very varied but 100% recommend because you just go into interchange you loot the kibber store and you get out it is a 10 minute raid and you could be making upwards of 450,000 rubles if you are lucky but bear in mind, you can make as low as 80,000 rubles if you're unlucky. You've got to be very aware of the RNG here. But if you are going in with a guy that has the Kibber keys and you're trying to get the Kibber 2 key and you haven't finished Gunsmith yet, then be aware that you can find a hell of a lot of the modded weapons that you need for Gunsmith inside the Kibber store itself. So there are many ways and many reasons you should actually go here rather than just the money. My third method is probably the best one, and that is doing shoreline money runs. Now, the drawback for this is you're going to need all of the keys that I'm going to mention shortly. But by doing this run, you certainly pull out the most amount of money if you are uninterrupted and successful. So Kinga did two runs of this because they do take longer than the other two methods. Run 1, he pulled out 427,000 rubles, and run 2, he made 605,000 rubles. This is one shoreline money run, and you can pull out over half a mil. Now this run starts in resort, and it does end in resort also, so you can just run straight to resort. Once you've looted all the rooms, you can just go and get out. So, depends on what side you start, but if you start on the west wing, you go straight to 216, and then once you've unlocked 216, you will find two weapon boxes in there, two grenade boxes, and a loose M4A1 spawn. Don't forget you can also find a lot of loose loot like computer parts, meds, and loaded M4A1 magazines. Make sure you check the ammo types inside those M4 magazines because you can find M995 ammo and that is very expensive. Then you move on to room 220. Inside here there are three weapon boxes and a lot of loose loot like meds and money. Then we move straight to the east wing and this is where the real money can be made. You can go straight to 206 or 205. These rooms are interlocking, so if you have either one of those keys, you can get in both rooms. Inside, there are three weapon boxes, a weapon locker, some rare item spawns, loose meds, a med case in room 205, a sports bag in room 205, and a lot of loose money lying around in 205 as well. Then you can move to 222 or 226. Once again, these are interjoining rooms, so if you have either one of these keys, you can get in both rooms. Inside are two weapons boxes, one gun locker, one weapon rack, one grenade box, and a toolbox. And then there's more rare item spawns, and there are two weapon spawns. There is one DMR and one SMG, so you're likely to find MP5s in there, and you can even find DMRs such as the RSAS and even the Foul now. There are also a lot of loose loot like money and food inside there as well. Then go upstairs and go to the room that everyone knows, and this is 310. Inside 310 there are two sports bags. There's a higher chance of Bitcoin spawning in these sports bags, so make sure you search them. And then there is a lot of rare item spawns in there, like Bitcoins, gold chains, lions, cat statues, all that fun stuff, as well as loose money as well. After you've looted there, you can go to 316. Inside there, there are two weapons boxes, one med bag, an SV-98 spawn, and rare attachment spawns as well. And then you go to the final room and that is 328. Inside here is there is a PC and then there's a sports bag and then there's a lot of loose loot like weapons attachments that can be rare as well and a lot of money. There's also one weapon spawn. You're likely to find AKSs inside these rooms. And then you can go and extract. Remember, all three of these methods require you to get out, and that's pretty obvious. But if you can get out, you're going to make a hell of a lot of money doing this. 
and I don't think the economy is going to change any time in the near future. So these are probably going to be the best ways for money to be made in Tarkov for quite some time. If it does update, I will let you know by making an updated video on the channel. But if you guys did enjoy this video, a like is always appreciated. Make sure you check out the Discord and the Twitch in the description because I do fun stuff there. Discord, you can even fucking play Pokemon in the Discord because I've got an integrated thingy and you can play Pokemon in there. How cool is that? Or if you want to watch me be shit at Tarkov, then come and follow my Twitch, man. It's all in the description. You'll love it. I promise. Money back guarantee and I won't message your mum inappropriate things. Other than that, guys, thank you for staying to the end. You do mean the world to me. Thank you for your overwhelming support on this channel. It's growing and growing, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. And I love that. You're in making me do the things that I enjoy. And I want to fucking come in your cereal and give you a happy-go-lucky merry-go-round. I love you all, guys. I'm going to go and fucking jump off a bridge. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Hope this helped.